Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India class to our course uh, mechanical behavior of materials so today we are going to talk about impact testing okay so the first question which comes to mind is you know why we st are studying impact testing okay so if you remember uh, when professor sushant sitra was discussing about tensile testing he must have mentioned to you uh, that uh, the strain rate, uh, what we use during tensile test is around, say, in the range of 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 4 per second, right? But there will be many applications where the strain rate will be much, much higher than what we use in tensile test, right? And if that happens, the behavior of the materials is also going to significantly change, okay? especially say impact testing. So impact testing also has a very high strain rate. Okay, so in that scenario, the materials behavior is going to change. And that is one of the reasons why we should, we need to study impact testing, okay? So materials behavior, change during very high strain rate. Okay. And in impact testing, we have a very high strain rate we use. So this is say impact testing, one of the examples impact loading okay you must have uh, heard the name impact right so when you when something is being impacted the strain rate at that time is very very high okay so this is the reason we need to study impact testing how material is going to behave during impact testing impact loading as well as what are the different tests we one can perform to measure the material's behavior, okay? So in fact, you know, when your strain rate is very, very high, a material tends to behave uh, brittle, uh, tends to show brittle type of behavior, especially if the temperature is low, okay? So we are going to also study about DBTT, which is the tie to brittle transition temperature. Okay, so during impact loading or when you have high strain rate, a material can behave, uh, can show the properties like a brittle material is going to show. Okay, so a ductile metal tend to show brittle behavior. Okay. So overall, if you see, when I say that, you know, a ductile material can uh, tend to become brittle, there are uh, three ways a ductile material can uh, become brittle. One is high strain rate. Second is low temperature. Third is dry axial stress. So 
so you have presence of notch etc okay so this will increase brittleness so if you have a high strain rate if you are uh, 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 testing at high strain rate and the test is being conducted at say low temperature and the material the sample specimen contains some notch etc which can uh, generate triaciality okay so if these three combinations are there material tends towards brittleness and you will see eventually that when you do the impact testing you are going to have all these three criteria okay in the impact testing itself so for now remember that when we do impact testing we are going to measure something called notch toughness or impact toughness you already know about the toughness so the energy what we measure in the impact testing we call it as notch toughness or impact toughness okay so one more thing you have to note that impact testing is more of a qualitative uh, nature means uh, 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 you know it, it can be used as a comparison method okay it's not an absolute value it's not a material property it can be used for as a comparative uh a study or a comparison between different materials okay so now let's understand how do you do impact testing okay so what equipment you use so here i am showing you the equipment what we have in our lab okay so you have scale here you can see uh, this is your pendulum or hammer you can see okay somewhere here which you cannot see you have an anvil where you are going to place the sample and i am going to show you how you place the sample i am also going to show you the sample dimension which is standard and there are two different type of methods we use in impact testing those will be discussed today okay so uh, uh, your hammer will be placed here on the top and then it will be released it will come down and in the anvil on the anvil you will place the sample your pendulum is going to hit the sample okay it is going to break it and then you are going to see some value in the scale and that value you have to know that will be called as impact energy or impact toughness or notch toughness okay so this is very simple equipment which we use for impact testing okay so basically remember you are going to have a pendulum then scale then anvil where you are going to place the sample so you can do at room temperature or high temperature or low temperature because we are going to talk about dbtt so low temperature okay so here i have shown uh, another schematic so you have a pendulum here okay hammer and you have a sample just for your understanding okay which is placed on the anvil you you are releasing the hammer it uh, scratches the sample and then you are going to achieve a different height of h dash so initially the sample or hammer height was h after it has scratched the sample the height is h dash you can note that h dash is less than h that means some of the energy has been lost one one of the ways to lose the energy is your friction air friction right but some of them will be also lost by imparting energy to the sample which will lead to the fracture isn't it okay and that is what we measure okay so we can write the energy conjunction absorption computed from the difference between h and h dash okay so that will be impact 
toughness it will be given as mg h minus stress okay and typically unit is in joule okay so the initial energy is mgh final energy is mgh dash you have to take the difference between the two and that will be given as impact toughness okay so some of the energy has been given to the sample for deformation okay and if it is completely brittle for fracture okay so this is how we perform the impact testing okay now what are the different tests so this is a general uh, concept of performing in impact test so we have two different methods one is charpy and another one is uh, ijod okay so the basic difference between charpy and ijod will be the placement of the sample on the anvil and you will see that okay so before that both are standard tests so you are going to have standard sample okay dimension then in the sample you are going to have notch and this is the reason i mentioned right when you do impact testing eventually you are going to observe the three criteria i mentioned right notch low temperature and high strain rate high strain rate is inbuilt huh? it is inherent to the impact testing that is always there notch is inbuilt in the sample as part of standard and you will see in some time from now that we are going to do test at different temperatures so at some point of time we will be testing the sample at low temperature also so all the three criteria are going to met during impact testing okay so this notch is actually going to provide you stress concentration and in general in india we prefer charpy test okay so that is the mostly uh widely used uh, impact testing out of these two in india okay so in india charpy test is widely used okay so let's see the sample dimension now so this is the sample how it is it looks like okay. so it's a square shape sample you can see the cross section is square shaped okay and this dimension is 10 mm this dimension is also 10 mm and uh, this distance from the notch is 8 mm okay and this is the notch here okay so in this region in front of the notch you are going to have stress concentration okay and this is the standard sample and standard dimension uh, for the notch we have 45 degree v notch so it's a v shape and the angle is 45 degree and since this is 8 mm and the overall dimension is 10 so the notch length is 2 mm okay now ijod and charpy i just mentioned that depending upon the placement of the sample on the anvil we will name them either charpy or ijod so this is how we place the sample 
इन चार की टेस्ट सो यू हैव एनविल्स हियर राइट सो दिस इज योर एनविल दिस इज योर सैंपल एंड योर हैमर इट इज गोइंग टू टर्न फ्रॉम दिस साइड ओके सो दिस इज योर हैमर सो यू आर गोइंग टू रिलीज द पेंडुलम फ्रॉम दिस साइड एंड इट इज गोइंग टू हिट द सरफेस विच इज अपोजिट टू द नॉच ओके and your notch it will be placed like this on the side of the anvil okay so you are going to see fracture occurring in this particular region here so this is how sample is placed on in the charpy test now this is the placement for eye jot test okay so you have anvil here as usual this is your sample okay notch you can also see okay now your uh, hammer you are going to hit the sample at this particular point like this so this is your hammer okay so if your uh, sample is like this you are going to hit on the top here hammer will go like this okay so now hammer is going to hit on the same side as of the notch and if you compare with the charpy test here hammer is going to hit on the opposite side of the notch okay so this is the placement of the sample on the anvil both are different in the different test isod and charpy test okay okay so now when we do this test we can do a different temperature isn't it so room temperature we can always do so whatever i just showed you till now we are we were assuming that we are doing at room temperature so you can do the test at different temperature and then you can measure the corresponding energy in the scale in the equipment okay so with respect to temperature you are going to obtain different notch toughness or say impact energy okay or impact toughness so what you can do you can plot impact energy on the y axis and temperature on the x axis okay and with different temperature you are going to obtain different impact energy so you are going to get a curve which will look something like this something like this okay so as you decrease the temperature your impact energy will be decreasing okay that means it is going towards more brittleness isn't it okay so first thing what you observe here is decreasing the temperature so decrease the temperature it is going to decrease impact energy so lower the temperature your impact energy is going to be low that means it is going towards more brittleness okay so here at very high temperature you are going to have uh, the tile behavior somewhere here you are going to have miss behavior and at a particular temperature you are going to see a transition from the tile behavior to brittle behavior okay and that particular temperature is called dbtt so below certain t the mode of 
failure or fracture is brittle. Okay, some temperature here where the mode of fracture is going to be brittle and we are going to uh, call as DBTT one of the criteria. You are going to see that DBTT definition is going to uh, have different, the different criteria will be used to define DBTT. Okay, so one of the criteria is this. And uh, so what we do, uh, we can see now the fracture surface. So you have uh, fractured the surface, okay? Now look at both the fracture surface. We have two surfaces, right? Two parts of your samples, okay? So you look at the fracture surface and by looking at the fracture surface also, one can determine whether it has a brittle behavior, a brittle fracture or ductile fracture or combination of brittle and ductile fracture. So if your fracture surface is granular, it shows shiny texture and cleavage. This is, these characteristics are for brittle behavior. Okay. And if it is of say shear character fibrous and the texture is dull then this will be your characteristics for the tile behavior Okay, so by looking at the fracture surface, if it is very, very shiny, one can say that, oh, it is brittle, okay? And if it is dull, then it is uh, ductile. And if it is a combination of both, then yes, it is, uh, it is having both mixed type of failure. It has some amount of brittle failure, some amount of ductile failure, okay? So this is how we classify by looking at the fracture surface. And I have here one example. Okay, this was done in our lab. And here your temperature is increasing or say decreasing in this direction. So this is at low T. So if I mark say T1, T2, and T3, so we have samples. Okay. And then what we did, we did impact testing at three different temperatures. So we did at T1 and T2 and T3. And then at these three different temperatures, we took the photographs using mobile, okay? And now we are looking at the surface. So here your T1 is less than T2 and T3, okay? Now, if you look here very closely, you can say that, you know, T3 is looking dull and T1 is looking shiny. Similarly, T1 has a cleavage type. The sample is very, very flat, okay? As compared to T3. So we can say that this type of behavior is your the tile type. And this one is more towards brittleness. Okay. And in between two, you will see that you're going to have combination of both. Okay. But even in T2, you will see that, you know, it is more towards brittle be brittleness compared to ductile behavior. Okay, because more shiny surface. So the uh, fraction of, uh, you know, shiny surface and uh, the dull surface will change depending upon the temperature. It is not like 50-50. Okay, it might be 90-10 or 10-90, depending upon the temperature. Okay, so you have two criteria to, uh, uh, to quantify or say measure DBTT. One is based on the impact energy and second is based on the fracture surface observation, okay? And we will use these two to define what we call as DBTT, okay? So there are different criteria to define DBTT and both are based on either uh, energy versus temperature curve or fracture appearance versus temperature curve, okay? So now we'll learn about criteria
for transition temperature. So here we have uh, two turfs, if you see here. So one is your uh, impact energy. Versus temperature. And another is your uh, appearance, fracture surface appearance, okay? Fracture appearance versus temperature. So we'll use both of them. So the red one we have seen before, right? It is fracture toughness, uh, fra impact energy versus temperature. So X axis is always temperature here. So here we have the impact and let me change the color so that, so red one is your impact energy. Okay. And the black one here is your fracture surface appearance. That means in this case, percentage cleavage fracture. Okay. So if you look at the fracture surface, you, you should be able to calculate how much percentage of the fracture surface area is of cleavage type. That means brittle behavior sort of, right? So that percentage you have to calculate and plot with respect to temperature. And if you do that, you are going to get black turn. And red one is the impact energy we are measuring from the equipment. Okay, so there are two ways to define it. One is based on the impact energy, which turns from the equipment. And second one is the fracture surface percentage cleavage fracture calculation, which you will be doing by looking at the surface or say in low mag, uh, of uh, low mag microscope. Okay. Now let's uh, uh, define some temperatures here. So we have, uh, let me use blue color. I don't see blue here. Okay. So one is your uh, T1, which will be this particular point. This point here is called T1. Okay. Uh, which is uh, fracture transition plastic or the probability of brittle failure is negligible. So this is T1. Then we have T2, which will correspond to a point here. I will discuss all this one by one. T2. So T2 corresponds to a temperature where you are going to observe 50% cleavage fraction. Okay. And that corresponds to this particular point here in the axis. Now we have T3, which is the temperature average of upper self and lower self. Okay. So if you see, this is your upper self. And this one is your lower self. Okay. So somewhere here, you're going to have average of upper self and lower self region. So this temperature will be called as T3. Now there is uh, one more or uh, two more. One is corresponding to 20 Joule impact energy. This will be called as temperature T4 which is defined as the tile transition temperature. Okay. And the last one is T5, which is called as nail ductility temperature, where the fracture will be predominantly or say 100% cleavage, which will correspond to this particular point, T5. Okay. So you see, T1 
वन टी फाइव एंड टी टू विल बी कैलकुलेटेड फ्रॉम द ब्लैक सो टी वन करस्पॉन्ड्स टू अ पॉइंट वेयर यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू ऑब्जर्व बिटल फेलियर ओके और क्लीवेज परसेंटेज इज ऑलमोस्ट जीरो T5 is a temperature where cleavage percentage is almost 100%, and T2 is a temperature where you are going to observe 50% cleavage in 50% ductile behavior. Okay, now T3 and T4 will be based on the red curve, impact energy versus temperature curve, where T3 is the average of the upper uh, self temperature and the lower self temperature. And T4 is called that uh, ductile ductility transition temperature, which is defined as a temperature where energy impact energy is 20 joule, a specific value. Okay, so this is how we define the transition temperature. There are different criteria. Okay, and one of the most famous out of these are is uh, ductile transition temperature uh, DTT, and the reason is because it is very simple. You have to just tell Plot impact energy versus temperature, and wherever you are going to get 20 joule as impact energy, that temperature will be called as DBTT. Okay, or in this case, ductile transition temperature. So let me write down one by one. So first one is T1, which is called FTP or fracture. Transition plastic, and it says that the probability of brittle fracture is negligible. This is your T one, and you can see it right in this plot here. So we are using black plot, and you can see that the percentage cleavage fracture is almost zero. Okay, and that is what it says: the probability of brittle fracture is negligible. So that is T one. Next is T two. It is. the temperature at which you are going to observe 50% cleavage and 50% shear so the tile and brittle type behavior okay and this temperature is called as fatt which is fracture appearance transition temperature okay so this is your t2 it corresponds to this particular point where you are going to observe 50% cleavage and 50% shear now t3 so t3 is a temperature which is the average of upper and lower half self So this is your T three, okay? And in the plot, this corresponds to this. Okay, and I mentioned right, this is your lower half cell, and this is your upper half cell here. Okay. Now next is T four, and this is the most famous among all these. It is called the tile transition temperature. and why it is most famous because it is the most simple one temperature dtt okay so it is most accepted
and the value will correspond to 20 joule so you have to get the temperature at which your impact energy is 20 joule and that will be defined as t4 okay now last is t5 which is this point here okay and it is called nil ductility temperature Okay, so here you are going to observe uh, most uh, no prior plaster deformation. Okay, so fracture with almost no plastic deformation. That way, it is uh, hundred percent cleavage. Okay, that is what we discussed. And you can also write probability of the tile fracture is negligible. Okay, below this. So we have five different criteria to measure transition temperature and the most famous or most accepted is DTT which corresponds to a temperature at which your uh, energy impact energy is 20 joule okay now the last uh, topic in this uh, impact testing is the effect of crystal structure on DBT so, you know, you have say FCC crystal structure or BCC or FCC. So, how your uh, curve is going to change? So, that is what we are going to talk about now. So, you have FCC, BCC, say SCP. So, what is going to happen? Okay. So, let me first plot it. So you can have a situation like this, okay, or say this one, another one, and the one which we have learned is something like this. Okay, so the red one here will correspond to low strength. FCC SCP metals. Green one will correspond to high strength materials. And the blue one, which we have studied till now in this particular topic, is for low strength. Steels, so BCC, and SFC is, is impact energy. And here you have temperature. Okay, so you are going to observe. You can observe either of these three uh, plots. Okay, so the red one corresponds to FCC and uh, SCP, low strength material. So there you are going to see that uh, there is no as such, no transition temperature and the decrease in impact energy is not very significant. Okay, high strength materials by nature is brittle. Okay, mostly brittle. So you are anyway going to observe low impact energy. You can see the impact energy value is small in this region compared to the FCC material impact energy is going to be high. Okay, and here also you're not going to observe the tile transition temperature typically. 
Okay, but if you have steel type of materials, you are going to observe a transition temperature we have, which we have discussed. So that is the blue curve here. Okay, so let me write very quickly. So lowest strength FCC metals such as aluminum, copper, okay, and most. SCP metals, they are not going to experience, so do not experience transition temperature. So they do not experience transition, the tile to metal transition. Similarly, you know, if you talk about high strength materials, same thing. Okay? So they will not experience. So let me write here itself. Do not experience transition. But their impact energy is anyway low. Okay. So this uh, the tile to brittle transition, you know, this will be typically you are going to observe low strength steels. Okay, where you are going to have BCC crystal structure. Okay, so this is what I wanted to discuss about uh, impact testing. Okay, and remember that uh, impact testing, at impact testing, we are going to observe very high strain rate as compared to what we see in tensile testing. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.